Hello y'all and welcome to my third video on my YouTube channel. My name is Charity Wrestler Watrich and today we're going to be talking about mental illness. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button or check the link in description to join my email list. Um, I would love to have you on that list. That is where you can find all my new content. I'll send that out to you as it shows up, as well as details about the anxiety devotional that I'm, I'm working on right now. Without further ado, let me tell you what this video is going to be about. Um, I'm going to be talking about Christianity and mental illness, kind of how they intersect and why I am so passionate about it. So it's going to be, I'm going to give you 11 reasons. That sounds like a lot. I know. Bear with me. As I said, I'm new to YouTube. What am I doing? I don't know. But I'm doing 11 points of why I'm passionate about mental illness. I'm just kind of giving an overview. Um, obviously, um, if you followed me for a while, you know that I've struggled with clinical anxiety and I've struggled with bouts of depression in the past, although those weren't uh, diagnosed at all. So um, I struggle with that, but that's not the only reason that I am passionate about mental illness, just because I struggle with anxiety. Um, the reasons go far beyond that. There's a lot of nuances to, a lot, uh, to it, and um, with my experience um, growing up in a cult and then seeing Christian community and um, growing up in the family that I grew up in, there are a lot more reasons that I'm passionate about it. So I'm going to dive into that today. Let's go. <laughs> Not deep at all. <laughs> Point one. <laughs> I've seen how a lack of conversation or damaging conversations about mental illness have hurt me and I know I'm not alone in that. So I say that as the first point because I have these experiences and I know it's not just me. I know it's not just me who has experiences like this um, and so I want to be a voice on the topic so that we're not all just silent about our experience. Two. Growing up, my emotions were used against me. Um, yelling, crying, hyperventilating, as in a case of a panic attack, um, were hmm, viewed as immaturity. It would, um, you know, make me want to hide if I ha was having a panic attack because I couldn't let anybody see, which only perpetuated those panic attacks, you know? Just made it worse because um, I had all these complex emotions now, not just about um, my emotions themselves. I mean, not just about the situation, but now it's like my emotions are causing me more emotions. So yeah, that whole spiraling situation, maybe you're familiar with it. If you're not, well, yeah, it can uh, do a number up here. Three. Um, this is a tough one. I didn't want to not address this. Um, sexual abuse and sexual harassment Emotional and spiritual and other forms of abuse uh, are all a part of my story and no doubt have contributed some to my anxiety, to my triggers, etc. And I have seen the ways that um, victims are not advocated for in those situations. It's even in the church setting, uh, particularly in the cult that I was growing up, but just in general, um, the way that um, abusers are often the ones that are advocated for and the way that victims don't get the care that they need. Point four, the cult I was in, um, Branhamism or The Message, um, regularly tried to control our thoughts and emotions. That's another big one. You know, if you're told that you're not allowed to think or feel a certain thing, you're going to be awkwardly suppressing those emotions. Um, and that's like, a form of spiritual abuse for sure um, because you're allowed to doubt things and you're allowed to process. Jesus' disciples often doubted him and he gently, sometimes harshly, but often gently corrected them in their unbelief and, show, and taught them. You know, he didn't just shame them. Oh, you, you, how dare you have that thought? You are no longer my disciple because you had that thought. No, that's not the way Jesus was. Five is William Branham. That's the founder of Branhamism. Uh, 
lost my place here. He claimed that people with mental illness were not true Christians. In that context, he was referring to people with depression. Six. Six. <laughs> um, six is mental health issues were often labeled as a demon or lack of faith. Now, I know that this is not just unique to the cult that I grew up in. I know that it's also been um, talked about in different churches. I'm not saying that mental illness is never um, influenced by demons, by spiritual darkness. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that is not the case most of the time. Um, and I don't think it's fair for anybody to place a judgment on somebody to say that, oh, the reason that you have depression, the reason you have anxiety, the reason you have schizophrenia is because you're possessed by a demon. Or to make the claim, oh, you have that, those issues, you know why it is? <clears throat> you say you've been praying about it, but I guess you don't have enough faith. I guess, um, if you really were a good Christian, you would have prayed it away by now. <laughs> Why do you still have it? You just must uh, not have good faith. Number seven. I'm going to just stop trying to do the hand thing. It's weird at this point. Um, number seven. The importance of counsel counseling was denied in my household. Um, so when I was about 17 years old, I begged to go to counseling. I was dealing with a lot of emotional issues, severe anxiety um, over a situation that had happened. And my family, my family being authority figures in my household, um, forbade it. So forbade it, forbade it. Um, so yeah, basically I really thought I needed counseling and I was not granted that as a 17-ish year old. So um, I just uh, snuck around. <laughs> Some, that, was, uh, that was part of me rebelling, I guess you could say. Um, so I went in a sketchy neighborhood after I'd been dropped off at school. So I went to college early. So I, I I think I was still under 18 at this point. Um, but I was dropped off at school and, you know, I just went to a counseling center that was within walking distance. It was a sketchy neighborhood, but I really wanted that counseling. Hashtag counseling is worth it. It seriously did help me, um, but I won't go into that story right now. Um, I wanna just continue on. My point with that was there is such a stigma around going to counseling that is not good. You need counseling. I think everyone can benefit from counseling. Point eight. Growing up, people who saw me having a panic attack would say things like, stop overreacting. Charity, you're being immature. What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. Um, or probably the worst, perpetuating a panic attack, you know, agging me on. Um, and not giving me the space that I needed. So that was extremely hurtful to me. And I think like part of that, how much can I really blame my family or other people who reacted that way to my panic, panic attacks? Obviously they were wrong, um, but obviously they were uninformed as well. They um, were immature in their reactions to my <laughs> mental illness. And um, I don't know how much I can blame them for that um, because they didn't know the harm that they were doing. Don't get me wrong, still wrong, still wrong. But um, I just want to inform people, hey, maybe that's not the way that you deal with somebody who's having a panic attack. Um, point nine is, I was taught that medication was for the weak or faithless Christian, so much so that even to this day, I still struggle with shame surrounding taking medication. So um, I, I won't go into like my whole history with taking medication for anxiety in this video um, because it could just, you know, drag on um, as I am, I am capable of ranting, <laughs> let's just say that, but I, um, 
I was about to just go into it, even though I just said I wasn't going to go into it. Clearly, we have the common grace of medication for different illnesses, different chronic diseases. We have medication for that. So how come when it comes to mental illness, there's such a stigma around it? Ten. <laughs> I guess it's ten. Um, I grew up mostly uninformed about mental illness. Um, so I always felt like something was wrong with me and I couldn't tell anyone. This is a biggie. As I kind of implied with one of the last ones of the way that people reacted to me, I likewise was not informed about mental illness and it really hurt the way that I processed my own mental illness and the way that I interacted with other people who perhaps had a mental illness. Um, it wasn't talked about. It was very, very taboo. When it was talked about, it was very negative. So, um, and not like focused toward healing or focused towards um, coping with that struggle or encouragement. It was pretty much don't talk about it or very negative. 11, uh, 11 is the reason I'm so passionate about it. It's like kind of just all that stuff I said I'm passionate about mental illness because I've seen so much growth and healing in my own life. Um, Matthew 5, 4 says, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. I have struggled with anxiety for a while and I've struggled with depression before. And sometimes in the lowest of lows, I have seen God working in my life in ways that he's never done before. I've been blessed by his comfort in my life. I'm not trying to say that I, I've experienced significant healing from my anxiety, that I don't have anxiety anymore, or that I will never have depression again. Um, but what I am saying is that God, God showed up in the midst of my struggles and worked through it. And I think that that is something that should be talked about. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button or sign up to my, to join my email list and leave a comment. If one of those points really resonated with you and you're like, oh, please, can we talk about this more? Or if it's something I did not mention, um, feel free to leave a comment. And I would love, love to make content that speaks to y'all in the particular areas that you have questions. So yeah, don't be shy. With that, that's all I got to say. This has been why I'm passionate about mental illness um, and how it intersects with Christianity. So I hope that it was helpful for you. I hope that um, you resonated with this. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.